Hello boys and girls, my name is Alsusti and after the moderate success of my white water guide videos for Greece, I decided to uh, do another one that is a bit closer to home, the Vorderrhine. This is one of two source rivers of the Rhine which flows from Switzerland through Liechtenstein, Austria, Germany and finally reaches the North Sea in the Netherlands. This video covers the upper part of the standard stretch from Ilans to Vassam, which makes up the first half of the Grand Canyon of Switzerland. For the put-in in Ilans there are multiple options. Just a bit upriver from the road bridge over the Ford Rhine, from the parking lot and through under the train line, or on the same level as the train station or on the contributory Glenno just above the train bridge. But then you miss out on the first nice boulders. The Vorderrhein can be puddled all year round. At low levels of about 10 cubic meters during the winter to 80 to 120 cubic meters during the snow melt or even over 200 cubic meters during torrential rain. As the level is also dependent on hydropower, check out the level progression beforehand. This material was compiled from two runs at 80 cubic meters and 30. I paddled the Vorderrhein since 30 years and it is never boring. For one, it is ever-changing. With every flood the core sections become different. Then at low level it can be a technical run while higher water levels bring big volume white water feeling. And on each run you can discover something new. This alone from the white water while the landscape is breathtaking. I seem to remember that in the old days the waves were bigger and had names like elephant waves. But maybe everything seems bigger when you're small, even if the boats were longer then. The Glenno, which flows in from the right shortly after the start, brings some additional water up to 40 cubic meter per second, which is most of the time milky and quite a contrast to the Green River. Some few hundred meters further down a footbridge spans over the river and just above it the river destroys quite a few meters with huge boulders and holes, at least at present. After that it levels out and runs towards an artificial boulder dam of the gravel pit on the left side. The river breaks through but currently there is not much gradient at the dam. There is some a bit further down. When a huge boulder splits the river this was Surf City. Once upon a time the surf spot where we spent hours until we got hungry and moved on. From here the river flow is more natural with gravel banks and increasing gradient along with Here the actual canyon begins, the Ruinalta, as it's called in Romanche, and means as much as high scree, which is quite appropriate. Around 10,000 years ago about 12 cubic kilometers of rock slid down into the wide valley blocking the river and forming a large lake in the region of Ilans. For comparison this is the volume of Lake Lucerne or a quarter of the volume of Lake Constance. It may be the largest rock slide in the world. Over time the Vorderrhein buried its way through the debris creating a unique landscape. It is believed that the current riverbed has not yet buried its way down to the original valley. 
I find the first few kilometers the best from a white water perspective as they present so much opportunities. And for the most part you can decide if you want to take the challenge or scoot around the more difficult spots. All along the river the train track is just on the right border along with a hiking trail. This allows you to fetch the car by train or by foot. You can even leave the car at the Versam station and board the train with your boat. The only road bridge over the river is a girders bridge near the Valendas train station. Below the bridge a contributary brings more milky water down from locks. The further run flattens out a bit on its course around a gravel nose on the right. Once the river takes a sharp left turn, the core section is upon you. From the right, the Carrera Creeks comes in. It flows down from the village of the same name, which also has a very nice camping ground. As the creek brings lots of gravel with each heavy rain, the following section often changes. The section being the black hole named after a black colored crack on the left side at the bottom of the cataract. For many years the gradient was higher than it is now and held right onto that section of the wall. Nowadays it's not so steep anymore and the gradient moved down to the following section making that one more interesting. The whole section can easily be viewed from the gravel bank on the right. On nice summer days you often encounter hikers or picnickers. If you are familiar with the section you know where the sticky holes are that should be avoided and which rocks can provide fun entertainment. Once alone that fir tree on a stone pillow comes into view you are almost there. But there are still a few fun spots. Stones that can be used for jumps, the live end on the left side opposite Sandy Beach and the strewn in rocks throughout the riverbed. As there was a rock slide a few years back you should not linger too long at the put out. You can disembark higher up or further down. From the riverbed you carry your boat through the forest up to the train station where you can find a restaurant that is open during summer, a canoe shop as well as two companies that offer kayaking and other coral. You can find additional information in the description below. If you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and if you don't want to miss any further videos subscribe. I have been Hotsus T and wish you a pleasant day.